Hey, y'all. We got a lot to talk about when it comes to college basketball. Holy shit. What a weekend. What a weekend we got once again in college basketball. I mean, if you weren't watching the NFL, you saw a great week of college basketball kick off on Monday with Illinois, Purdue, my goodness. Andre Cabello returned for Illinois and, and made a game out of it. I mean, this was a good-ass game between Purdue and Illinois. You know, Jay Nivey was out here shit-talking. I mean, I mean, him and with the help of Sasha Stefanovic, you know, I mean, they, that, that dude was also helping out in this game. You know, this Purdue defense, they did just enough to contain Kofi Coburn, you know, foul him out. He actually got knocked out with a concussion. With a, he actually had a concussion and missed the game against Maryland. You know, in which Maryland beat. You know, they they beat Illinois. You know, Illinois has two losses this week. You know, because I mean Purdue Illinois went OT, and you know it 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 did crazy. It did crazy with a huge win in W overtime for Purdue. But you know that that game for that 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 game for you know Illinois you know both these games this week for Illinois have to be devastating you know you lose in a crazy double overtime game to Purdue then you get smacked around by Maryland you know a Mar- the same Maryland team that lost their coach 2 months ago yeah that Maryland team and then you know we haven't talked about this man yet on this channel Keegan Murray and company but we're going to talk about him you know when it comes when it comes when it comes, when it comes in a few minutes here but my goodness let's talk about Iowa Iowa and Rutgers had one of the most ugly games of this year, in which Rutgers actually won it. 48-46. Ugly. Ugly game. Ugly game. And then Indiana, you know, Rob Finnessy, you know, and I hope I'm saying that name correctly because I usually get names wrong, but Rob Finnessy and Indiana, they knock off Purdue on Thursday night. And that, that just wasn't the tip of the iceberg. That wasn't the tip of the iceberg for the Big Ten. No, 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 no. John da- Johnny Davis, Brad Davison, they had over 40 together. But yet the Badgers still, they couldn't beat the Spartans. Luckily, these two have another rematch, you know, coming down the line. Fortunately, I think I was working that day. I was definitely working that day, so I didn't get to see this game, unfortunately. I really wanted to, though. I really wanted to see this Michigan state wisconsin game and then you know michigan also beat indiana today pure insanity like i like michigan has one of the worst you know one of the worst times you know they've had some of the worst games this year in which you know they've been absolutely smacked around at times this year but that was a big win for them because i mean again the big 10 has been crazy this year and i hope we don't get to talk about you know the big 10 like this again because you know, it, it's been crazy. I believe Michigan State is in first place as we head into this week. Um, so yeah, a crazy week for the Big Ten. Let's go to let's go to the actual conference that is the best conference in the country, the Big Twelve. Yeah, yeah. Kansas continues to escape. They escaped against Kansas State. They escaped against uh, Oklahoma as well. The Horns, by the way, they lost to Kansas State. They. You know, Kansas State didn't have anybody in that first meeting a couple weeks ago. They got everybody back. And I don't know what in the world Marcus Carr was doing in this game at the very end. Like, this man spent like three minutes, no, not three minutes, three seconds, three seconds too long getting the ball up the court. And then, you know, yeah, he, he actually got a good shot off. But, I mean, he could have, like, you know, it's something. Again, the Horns aren't supposed to be losing these types of games because, I mean, this is, this is, this is that Longhorn mentality. You know, that, that's been a problem for the Longhorns basketball team since Rick Barnes left. You know, that mentality isn't there, and it's sad. It's really sad. Like, I think the Horns will be knocked out of the rankings this week, in all honesty. You know, they beat Oklahoma State in a slugfest, but Oklahoma State's not going to the tournament this year. Um, and, you know, Oklahoma State also, you know, they, they've had some rough, rough games in conference play so far this year as well. Baylor got back on track, though. That's good for them. They got back on track. They'll be in the top five still, probably. Texas Tech, they're legit. They're they're a legitimate team. They 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 got they got the offense together. And they whipped Iowa State, you know, pretty much, you know, at, at this time. And then you thought Iowa State's troubles 
ended there, you know, with the Texas Tech loss. No. Davian Ball and TCU whipped them on Saturday. They got dominated. They only scored 44 points. Big 12. Conference of Cannibals. Conference of Insanity. Conference that is the best conference in the country. I keep saying that. I will continue to say that until we get to March. I will say that until we get to March, baby. Because, I mean, the conference is going to cannibalize itself in a way that hasn't been seen in quite some time. Insanity. Kansas is probably going to lose another game at some point. I, I just know it. You know, it, it it might be this week, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, in the ACC, yeah, organized this by conference, by the way. ACC, Duke lost to Florida State. One of the dumbest ways possible. We're talking the ball got kicked at the end. It was in overtime, I believe, you know, in Florida State. Now they hold on to first place in the ACC because they beat Miami. And Miami, on the other hand, Miami, they whipped North Carolina. And North Carolina got whipped by Wake Forest. What's going on out here? Is the ACC going to get any more bids? I, like, I keep I keep feeling like the ACC is going to get one to three bids in the tournament this year. Like, that's just how I'm feeling. Like, maybe I need to watch more ACC games because, I mean, Duke isn't doing it for me. It's not. It, it's just, it's Duke. It's the same thing like watching Tom Brady. It's the same thing like watching Alabama. It's boring to watch Duke. It's boring to watch Kansas unless they're playing a big-time game. It's boring to watch North Carolina unless they're playing a big-time game. It's, it's boring, you know, to watch UCLA unless they're playing a big-time game. But that that's going to change very, very soon. Oh, boy. Um, so, yeah, ACC's crazy. I don't have anything about the Pac-12 here, but I will, you know, when we get down to it. And speaking of Texas, how about former head coach of the Texas Longhorns, current Marquette coach, should be ranked Marquette, Shaka Smart. Oh, boy. Daryl Morcel, Justin Lewis, they beat Xavier. They beat Xavier, and they also beat Villanova. Mar Marquette, Marquette is legit, man. Marquette is legit. They they are the real deal this year. They are the real deal. Again, they have a tough they have a tough stretch as well. Keep in mind, Marquette does. They have a tough stretch, you know, to where they've gotten. You know, they they've had they they've had some games, you know, coming up that are gonna be real real tough. And they navigated through some of these so far with effortlessness. That is how you do it. That is how you build a tournament resume right there beautiful stuff because Xavier they stumbled you know and barely got past the Paul you know you shouldn't be surviving the Paul you, sh you should be getting past them you know a little bit better than that in the SEC however the SEC Alabama Jade Shackford cooked LSU and then LSU lost to Tennessee on Saturday but really the game of the week the big game of the week oh boy Auburn, Kentucky, and my goodness, what a game it delivered. And, I mean, I, I really thought Auburn struggled in that first half. I mean, a lot of people said the same thing. Auburn struggled in the first half. Like, oh, something's going wrong here. And, but yet, you know, with the help of Walker Kessler, with the help of K.D. Johnson, Jabari Smith, of course, the Tigers are going to be the number one team in the country. And keep in mind, the only team that beat Auburn was UConn. It, it, and that was back in November, you know. Despite despite the fact that Oscar Sheboy had to double double in this game and was, you know, going inside because I mean, Kentucky kept going inside. They kept getting the fast break points. They kept getting, you know, making the plays they needed to do. But Auburn just did a little bit more in this game. They did a little bit more and they got the plays they needed at the very end to separate themselves from Kentucky. And that is how you do it right there, Auburn. Honestly, if they're not the number one overall seed by the end of the ball, I, I just don't. I just don't know. Like, I know a lot of people are moving Wisconsin into a number one seed for some reason, which they don't really deserve, you know. But th this is only this is only late January. It's only late January. We still got a month to build these resumes up for some of these teams. I had to talk about the AAC real quick because um, Petty Hardaway he's having a breakdown, man. Like, they they got they got beat by SMU. They won a lucky game against Tulsa in which Tulsa had a brain fart but at the end of the game, but Memphis I, I, I don't I don't see I don't see I don't see Memphis making the tournament. I'm sorry. 
They're like they're barely over 500. Do you see anybody else making it to the tournament in boy sports? Maybe SMU. Maybe. I mean, I I, I don't I don't see it because I mean the only team that I see making the tournament is Houston from the from this conference because every time it seems like Houston loses a guy, Houston keeps losing players and yet they keep dominating. They keep whipping. The Moas in, in, in the AAC. This is just sad. <laughs> this is like an undermanned Houston, an undermanned Houston team still beating up on the AAC. We still have a Memphis Houston matchup to go over, but I think that will be till like later. You know, it'll be like in February when we go over it, because um, that's gonna be real intriguing. Because I mean, I, I feel like I feel like there's nobody in the AAC that can stop Houston right now. So we'll see. And speaking of teams that can't be stopped, San Francisco, they did play Gonzaga. I, I originally thought, you know, I thought, you know, games were, you know, I thought these games weren't going to happen until later. But it turns out it happened this week in which San Francisco played Gonzaga. And it didn't go well. It didn't go well for San Francisco. Timmy and Holborn were just, they were too much. Like, like they had the Bulldogs on the ropes. The Dons did for like just a few minutes. They were like up 50 to two at one point, and yet by the end of it, the Sags still won by 16. It it's just it's just insanity, bro. Like I know a lot of people don't really want to see Gonzaga get another another number one seed, but I mean somebody in the WCC has to step it up. BYU has already lost to them once. They have another game at some point, but you know, again, something's got to be done. And originally, I wanted to talk about the WAC for a different reason, but that ended up, you know, not going the way I wanted it to. But UT Arlington, I did say something about this last Sunday night. Um, UT Arlington, they're joining the WAC. It was kind of expected at this point that they were going to go somewhere. Um, it wasn't going to be the Missouri Valley for obvious reasons. Again, I just don't think, you know, UTA is really that, you know, really that type of school, you know, they don't have the market. They, ain't nobody coming to see UTA basketball, so the WAC is a perfect fit for them. You know, a lot of people are talking about UTA football as well, but this is not a video talking about football, so you know, we'll talk about, you know, UTA football reviving and maybe like another video or something like that. But they're joining the WAC, good for them. That'll bring the WAC back up to 13 by the time Sam Houston and New Mexico leave or at a New Mexico State, excuse me. The, those two teams leave, you know, in 2023. So the WAC looks pretty set at where they are right now. So why don't we talk about the games for this week? Because, you know, Keegan Murray and Iowa, they'll be playing Purdue on Thursday night. They have all I believe Purdue and Iowa already played at one point this season. They think they played a couple weeks ago. So that's going to be interesting. Texas Tech, Kansas on Monday night. Tuesday night, Michigan State, Illinois, Kofi Coburn. Versus, um, you know, if he if he's healthy and stuff like that, you know, I'm sure a concussion doesn't take that long to heal from. I mean, you know, it takes like a week or so to heal. You know, so that's gonna be something. The real money maker is Tuesday night Arizona UCLA. My goodness, Christian Coloco, Johnny Juzang. Oh boy, it's gonna be juicy, juicy matchup. Ben Mathurin, you know, you know, juicy matchup right there on Tuesday night. Get the Bill Walton meter. Get the Bill Walton meter. It's gonna be crazy. I guarantee you. I hope he's commentating that game on Tuesday night. Wednesday night, Providence and Xavier. Um, I'm not sure if Xavier is gonna be ranked by the end of it all, though. I just wanted to get something, you know, for Wednesday night because I don't see a lot of stuff for Wednesday night. In all honesty, let me check again. Um, I don't. I know the ranking is gonna come out tomorrow morning, but. You know, Wednesday night really doesn't have a lot. I mean, Texas A&M was formerly undefeated in, you know, SEC play, but that's not the case anymore because um, they lost to Kentucky this week. So, you know, it is what it is. But the real big, the real big thing, the real juiciness is the Big 12 SEC Challenge on Saturday. Oh boy, I don't know what I don't know what in the world kind of Saturday we're gonna get because I mean it's a crazy Saturday for me because I mean. That late lineup is stacked, stacked Saturday, uh, you know, late. You know, we'll talk about the last game here in a moment. But really the games I'm looking forward to are LSU, TCU. LSU's had a bad skid. TCU's got a big win, you know, on their resume, you know, with 
that win this week. You know, Oklahoma Auburn. Oklahoma is an interesting team to watch and look out for. Auburn, obviously, number one team in the country at this point in everyone's eyes. Baylor, Alabama. That's going to be real fun. Kentucky, Kansas, of course, the Blue Bloods battling it out. Going to be real intriguing. You know, Sheebway versus Jalen Wilson. Or, or, you know, it, it's going to be it's going to be real fun. You know, I'm not sure who's going to be guarding Sheebway in the inside. You know, and then Tennessee, Texas again. You know, Texas not. I don't think Texas is going to be right, but I do think Tennessee will be. So you know, if you want to watch something, you know, while the uh, while the Royal Rumble is going on, and while there's a NBA game going on, this is the game for you, Tennessee, Texas. It's going to be real fun. Going to be a real fun Big Twelve SEC Challenge. I know I didn't talk about half these games, but I mean half these games, you know. You know, didn't really catch my eye as much as the others did, but these five right here probably have the most intriguing storylines to them. You know, again, you know, I, mean, I think you know this is gonna be this is gonna be one hell of a week. Gonna be one hell of a week. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, and then of course you know you take Friday off, you take a little sabbatical, and then you get to Saturday, and then it's just the good stuff. And don't forget. Sunday. Oh boy, I think I almost forgot Sunday here. Ohio State, Purdue. Oh boy. Oh boy. That is going to be fun as well. Oh boy. Delicious stuff right there. Ohio State, you know, EJ Liddell, you know, that's going to be real intriguing to see how he does in this game against Purdue. I'm not sure if Ohio State and Purdue have another meeting, you know, in this season, but I'll check here. You know, they do not. It's just the one meeting. You know, but Ohio State also has Minnesota. Minnesota's not going to be a tricky opponent. We already talked about Keegan Murray, who's been a force for the Iowa Hawkeyes this year, going up against Purdue on Thursday night. So we'll see how this game goes between Ohio State and Purdue, because that's going to be real fun. That, that, that game's going to be real fun. And, you know, Ohio State, you know, they retain their rank. They're going to be They're going to be right in the mix in the top 20. You know, they didn't do too much this week. Again, they had to reschedule a game and get that game in, you know, with IUPUI. So that that that's it there. So that being said, a big week, a big week of college basketball. I cannot wait for each and every one of these games. I'm going to be trying my best, you know, to work around my schedule and work around my job and everything to get to watching these games because this is going to be a big week, man. Cannot wait. Let's see what this week entails. I'm going to get on out of here and skedaddle, and I will see you all again very soon to talk more sports on the channel. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell, do all you need to do, and I'll see you soon. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're seeing this, take care.